Welcome back. I'm Rich Gallicini with Cunningham Piano Company. And I'm Hugh Sum. Hugh, each week we address a question that's been sent to us. I have a good one this week. Oh, what's the question? We had a few people ask us, what's the difference between a baby grand and a full-size grand piano? Okay, or just a baby and a grand piano. So, so tell us, Rich, sure. what's the difference between a baby grand and a grand piano? Well, first of all, we have to start out with the fact that each piano has 88 keys and they are standard width. Okay. So every grand piano, what, regardless of size, is going to have the same width. So when we're talking about size of a baby grand or a grand, we're talking about the length. Okay. The part of the piano that goes behind the keys. So from the keys to the back of the piano. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So? And that can vary tremendously from piano to piano. In fact, we have in stock right now concert grand piano size, nine foot grands. Yeah. And we have some very tiny pianos that are four and a half feet. You know what's going to be a lot of fun? Let's do something. Let's compare the differences in sound mm -hmm. between a very, very small, grand, a small piano mm -hmm. and a very, very big piano. And I think what we're going to hear is a really big difference in, of course, the size makes a big difference. Tell us a little bit about the physics of why the size of the piano affects the sound so much. Sure. Well, it affects the sound in a couple of different okay. ways. One is we get more overtones. Because the strings are longer, all of the overtones are contained in the strings, so we can get a fuller, bigger sound. But believe it or not, you can actually play softer on a larger piano mm. if you have good technique because the, the parts inside the piano are actually longer and bigger, which make it easier to get a soft sound. Does now, that make sense? Absolutely. Now, just to clarify, overtones, believe it or not, when you hit a note on the piano, you don't just hear that note, That's right. but there are other harmonics, other vibrations, other frequencies that can lend itself to the basic sound. So if you hit one note on a small piano, you'll just hear a fraction of the extra vibrations as opposed to the longer piano where you hear more of what you mentioned, the overtones or the extra, I don't want to say noise, but the, the extra, extra color. Extra color. There the you extra go. color yeah. of the sound. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So let's have some fun. Let's play a really small piano a medium-sized piano, and a really large piano. And let's, we'll kind of do a Goldilocks thing and let you decide which one you like best. This is going to be fun. <laughs> let's go. Okay. Hugh, that was a lot of fun. That really, really was. I heard a tremendous difference between the very smallest. Now, this is a very small piano that we yeah, started Yeah, that out was with. exceptionally small. And the large nine-footer. Right. And, and we forgot to really address the question, so when does a piano become a baby grand, and when does it grow up into becoming a regular grand piano? Is there a standard terminology for that? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, the very first five-foot piano that was ever built in 1885 by Hugo Sommer was called the baby grand. That's what Hugo Sommer called it. Before that, all the Victorian size grands were over six feet, seven feet, nine feet. They were mm. large, gargantuan, monstrous pianos. Uh, so Hugo Sommer took that step. That nickname stuck, but it 
became a general term. Mm. So really, it's like asking, when does short become tall? <laughs> when, does, when does hard become soft? When it, all these sort of relative terms. So a baby grand is relative. If I grew up with a seven foot grand in my house, yeah. I might see a six footer and call it a baby grand. Mm. If I grew up with a little four foot six baby grand in my house, I might see a six footer and call it a concert grand piano. I mean, would it be fair to say that pianos generally between the five and six foot range could be classified as baby grands and then above that, grands and then above seven feet, maybe a concert grand? Is that too general uh, a distinction? Well, here's the thing. You know that I don't use generally those, mm -hmm. those descriptions. I just say this is a five foot grand, yeah. this is a seven foot grand. Mm -hmm because it's all relative, and mm -hmm. I may very well mislead someone that I'm speaking with no. because of what they have in their minds. That's a very good point. You know, so um, anyway, I hope that helps a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all relative in a sense, yeah. and yet you can also hear the differences. That was so much fun, playing those three different pieces. The differences three, are definitely Same piece, clear. three different pianos, you know, yeah, yeah. so kind of a Goldilocks moment there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and again, just to also to point out, it's not just that larger pianos are always better than smaller pianos. Sometimes the smaller piano will fit a smaller space more appropriately. It can be a situation where you have a piano that's too large for a small space. That could be inappropriate too, right? Good point. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So anyway, thank you so much. We really love your questions. Keep them coming and leave us comments and feedback in the comments section below. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter so that we can let you know when we have new answers to new questions that you post for us. And I want to thank everyone for joining us and spending a little bit of time with us. We have fun with this. Absolutely. And I hope you're having fun with it too. I'm Rich Galassini. And I'm Hugh Sung for Cunningham Piano. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.